So a lot of people will be playing FIFA 21 career mode this week, so I thought this video might be useful for a few of you guys. I'm going to be going over how to start your career modes in FIFA 21. Now this is going to be some tips and tricks that I've figured out while playing the game mode already, and maybe if you get the game on the 6 or the 9, uh, you'll understand what to do and get going quickly. Now of course if you find this video useful, if you do enjoy it, please leave a like, it always helps. And if you want to get more FIFA 21 content, we're going to be uploading this all year, so please subscribe today if you haven't already. Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the best app to get all the latest football news and live updates. They've got a new and improved app, and they want you to try it out. It's cleaner, simpler, and smarter than ever. Now, this app is the only football app I've got on my phone because it covers everything. So if you want to try it out for yourself, make sure you use my link in the description. You can download it for free. Now the most important thing, before you even get into the game, before you do anything like that, you have to plan. The first planning you have to do is actually, you know, decide what team you want to use and what type of career mode you want to do. Do you want to do a rebuild where you just like rebuild a big club that, you know, has fallen from grace over the last couple of years, like a Man United type of thing? Do you want to spend big money in a financial takeover? Do you want to do like a road to glory with a bottom division team trying to take them all the way to the top? This is an important step because it gives you a sense of direction and storyline for your career mode. So the first thing, of course, pick a team, could be your favorite team, whatever you want to do. It could be a team, you know, in the fourth division and pick a type of crew mode you want to do, like a rebuild, road to glory, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, that, that's the most important step. And then the second thing you need to do is plan what signings you want to make. Now, everyone knows you can use sites like SoFIFA.com, which is like a database website for FIFA. You can see player stats and that. It's a little bit of a type of way of cheating. But EA doesn't give you the stats unless you scout the players in crew mode, so this will save you a lot of time. You can go to SoFIFA.com, check the high potential players, check whatever you want actually, and it'll tell you the players, and maybe you can plan your signings on there. For me personally, when I go into a save, I pretty much know already which players I want to look at. I do the research on real life transfer targets. I like to keep things sometimes realistic, depending on what team, what type of save I want to do. And then sometimes I replicate those signings in the first season. Sometimes I go for those cheaper high potential players as well because I can keep them around. They're cheap to buy and I'll let them grow over a couple of years and then they're going to come good or you can sell them for huge profits. Sometimes I go for the world class signing straight away like a Sancho or something. It's just basically up to you. Personal preference here. Some prefer realistic signings in their saves while other people just go all out from the get go and they don't care about realism. I think planning for your team your type of career mode you want to do and also the players you want to sign is some of the best parts of career mode. So with that out of the way, let's talk about getting into the actual FIFA 21 game. So the first thing you need to do is download the latest squads. This is going to be important before you even start the career modes at all. Downloading the latest squads will ensure you have the stats that reflect real life. It also means you could get any new faces that come into the game depending on what time of the year you actually do the download. And then also you get the latest transfers as well. Especially with the start of the game cycle, you need the latest transfers. So I do suggest you download the latest squad update when the prompt comes up. It should be, you know, in the crew mode part of it when you load it up. If it doesn't come up, then go to, you know, edit section of the home screen and go to download and go to the latest updates there. Now, there's also another important setting this year in career mode because EA has removed the catalog. They've introduced a few different things into the menus of career mode. The first thing is to see if you want negotiations set to strict or loose. For me, strict negotiations can be hard for those looking to do heaps of signings. Like if you want to spend big money, strict negotiations might not be for you. I've played Pez that had strict negotiations on and it's pretty difficult to sign any world-class talent because the clubs don't want to let them go. But if you have it to lose, you'll have more chance of signing whoever you want to look at. Sometimes when it's on strict, it can get a little bit frustrating when you want to make a signing and then the club says, we're not giving you that player. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But I must say, if you want proper realism in the transfer section of your career mode saves, then strict is probably going to be better for you. It just depends what you want to you know do with your save if you're going to do like a financial takeover i wouldn't put uh, strict negotiations on i'd keep it at loose so just see what works for you and depending on the type of save you want to do this is a crucial setting now there's also another setting that's been implemented into the home setup screen of career mode it is the financial takeover section so we all know what a financial takeover thing is you get a big cash injection into your club and you can spend the money on transfers and salaries all that kind of stuff a lot of players love their financial takeover saves. This year, it's easier than ever to do that. EA has put it in as a built-in setting now in the menu because of the catalog being removed. So you can adjust your starting budget up to 500 million for any club in the game. Of course, you can lower it to like 10 million if you want to. So you can also have a lower budget than usual. 
and you can also disable the setting as well for those people that don't want a financial takeover but going back to what I was saying it just depends what you want from the save you know if you want to give a fourth division team 500 million you can do a massive financial takeover save there even a club in the Premier League could get this financial takeover thing it could be fun it could be fun depending on the team depending what you want to achieve in the save now it's time to select your preseason tournament now what I would recommend is just pick one, even if you don't want to play it. I know people get bored of preseason. Pick one with maybe, you know, some middle class teams that you can sort of reach the semis or final on. And uh, even if you don't want to play it, simulate the games and you might even get to the final. You might even win the tournament through the simulations. And you can use that extra bonus cash, which is sometimes like 10 million or something, to buy players, which is a useful amount of money considering there's no request funds feature in the game. So what I like to do is pick one, simulate the preseason, and you know, collect a bit of a cash bonus at the end of it, even if you don't win anything. Now this year as well, in career mode, the Youth Academy is going to be preloaded. So this means that when you start your save, you already have a Youth Academy going. You don't have to scout players, all that kind of stuff. Um, you'll have a couple players in your squad already. One of the first things to do this year is to check your Youth Academy for any decent players. I've seen some people get like high potential, high overall players already. If you have like the homegrown talent pre-order bonus, you might get something good there as well. But for me, I'm not going to spend 30 bucks just for, the, for a homegrown talent, you know. I just bought the standard edition, but some people might have got it. You might want to check that out as well. But overall, it's a nice addition to have like the startup of the Youth Academy already going when you start your save. Now, the next important thing you need to do is check your objectives. For each club in the game, EA has created some objectives that you may need to fulfill to keep your manager score up. Failing to fulfill objectives can hurt your score and may get you sacked, as you guys know. It is important to know what the game wants from you before you begin. So, you can see with different things for United, you know, you've got your youth center that you need to do up. You need your cash that you need to make for the club. You need to sign big players over three seasons, all that kind of stuff. That is very important. And also, you need to win tournaments and reach the final and stuff. So, there's many different things that affect the manager rating. It is important to know that, otherwise your manager score will go down. Another thing you need to do this year is start training your players immediately. Training is important this year and the game requires you to train players to better their match sharpness. You need to do the best you can in each drill because when you simulate the games, the game will give you the best score for the drill. If you don't do the drills, the game defaults to giving you a D score every time. So it is important to do the drills at least once to get maybe an A, B or C score. Otherwise, each drill is going to give you a D which does not help your players that much. I know it can be boring doing the drills, but this year it is important to do them at least once. Another thing you need to do is sort out your position conversions early. Because some of these take heaps of time. If you want to change like a right winger into a centre back, it might take five or six seasons. So that's why I'm saying it's going to take a long time depending on which ones. Some even take half a season for minor changes. Early on, you should be planning, you know, which players do I want to convert. Check your lineups, check what formation you want to play, and see which players can also play in multiple positions. Like maybe Greenwood could go on the right wing or the right mid, and then go into the striker role. So that's something that I was looking at as well for him. So pretty much just try and see if you can do any of the conversions early on, and uh, you'll get multiple positions for multiple players, which is nice. Another thing that you need to do immediately in Fever 21 career mode is set up your weekly schedules. Now, by default, EA will give you a weekly schedule, but you might want to tweak it a little bit depending on whether you want to recover your players, rest your players, or train your players. I like to rest before the match day and after the match day. I like to have like a recovery or something, but it's all personal preference. I'm still trying to figure this out as well, you know. I still don't really know 100% how this works, which players I should use to train, you know, for the sharpness and all that. But the main thing here is to set up a weekly schedule that works for you. It's important to rest the players and recover the players as well. So that's pretty much it for how to start your career modes. I mean, there's not much to it, but, you know, if you do the right things at the start, you could have a pretty fun career mode going. I might make a video on the best teams to use in career mode this year, maybe the best players to sign and stuff. So I just hope you found this video useful. If you did, leave a like. If you're new around here, we're going to have FIFA 21 all year, so make sure you subscribe for more tips, news, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh... If you need something else to watch, hit the card in the middle. It'll take you to another video of mine. I'll see you next time.